Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to a new card making video. Today I will be creating 10 cards while making the most out of my ephemera pack from my Create Happiness collection that I designed for Stamperia. This is from my first collection and it is available worldwide. There is a second collection with another ephemera pack which is perfect for this as well, but I will be making a video using that pack in a couple of weeks probably. So uh, I'm just showing you what's included in the ephemera pack. You can see there are five big elements, five big designs. I designed them for art journaling, but you will see that they are perfect for other crafty projects, including card making. Then you get a bunch of flowers, leaves and butterflies to decorate your elements. Some of the cards I'm sharing today are very simple to recreate, others are more involved, but all in all this video is going to be quite long, so if you want you can pause now, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like, and let's start with the first card. For this first card I'm going for a vintage look and feel and I'm starting by inking up a panel. For all the inking that I will be doing in this video I am going to use my ink pads, the new six colors that uh, I have with Samperia and uh, this way you will be able to see how lovely they blend and the colors in action. So as you can see I'm inking up this background and I kind of trying to get that ombre look and feel where I have more saturated color in one corner while lighter color as I go towards the other edge. The tool you choose to apply the ink is very important here. Here you can see I'm using a blending brush. This applies color very lightly and I have to go over and over again to build up the color. And in this video I'm going to show you both ways of applying light layers as well as very saturated ones. I'm going to combine two different tools. So here I'm going to apply some water splatters. These are going to react with the color. It's going to lift and create a lovely effect. And let's add some uh, brown splatters as well. By the way, the dye ink that I'm using here is coffee. Now to complete the look of my background I'm going to do some stamping. I chose to go with a text stamp. This uh, is the Elements stamp set from my collection. And again I'm not introducing any new color. I'm going again with a coffee dye ink and I'm going to stamp in a few areas. This is a technique for backgrounds that I usually go for my art journal pages but you can definitely recreate it for cards as well. And you can notice in the background how the splatters, the water splatters, become more visible as they dry. With the same brown ink I'm going to ink up the edges of my element. I'm going with the coffee cups for this card. And now with my craft knife I'm going to create a slit along the line of the top cup. This way I can tuck inside leaves and flowers and create a little flower composition. You can definitely add more slits along the lines of the rest of the cups in this stack and tuck inside leaves and flowers as well. Everything in the ephemera pack is a sticker, so you can actually peel off the backing and stick them on your projects. However, I choose to go with foam tape for this one, just because I want to add some dimension. All the designs today are very versatile, so you can use any sentiment that you like. You can use the cards for pretty much any occasion. For this one I went with sending happy thoughts and most of the stamp sentiments for today are coming from the Fair Friends Greeting stamp set by Simon Says Stamp, but you can truly use any sentiment that you have. Now I'm going to ink up the edges just to make it uh, look more um, brownish. I don't want this to be super bright since I don't have any super bright colors on my project already. I'm going to use some foam tape at the back and stick it in place. To decorate my card I finish it off with a few golden gems and here are some close-up photos. Using elements from this pack doesn't mean you have to go vintage way. So here is a clean and simple card and not as involved as the previous one. It's going to be super quick and simple. This time I'm using my cerulean blue ink and absolutely love this color. And I'm using a blending tool, not a blending brush, which transfers ink quicker and it adds more saturated look. However, I want an even softer look 
as I transition from blue to white, that's why I switched into a blending brush, which always gives a softer blending. So this time, instead of using foam tape, I'm just going to stick it directly on top, just to show you that this is actually a sticker. You can definitely use foam tape at the back and add dimension. Now, obviously, this balloon is really big, so I'm just going to chop off a part of it. You can definitely fit this on top of a card if you add it at the center. However, I like to have uh, elements coming out of the page somehow. I think it adds more interest and you can definitely use parts of it on other areas of this panel to give the look as if there are other balloons at the sky as well. Choose some leaves and flowers from the ephemera pack to decorate your balloon. You can go with bigger or with smaller flowers. You can even create a bigger co flower composition here. I'm going clean and simple and I'm going to stamp a sentiment to finish off my card. So again from the same stamp set I picked a Hello Friend. I'm stamping that with black shadow ink. I use foam tape at the back and I'm sticking that on a standard card size. And here are some close-up photos on the second card for today. Remember, this ephemera pack is less than $10 and it is a great value for money. Always keep in mind that it was designed from a crafter for crafters. So let's make the third card for today. This time I'm playing with the boots and you can definitely use both boots, create flower composition at the top. However, don't forget, you can always transform the elements and make them work for what? You want to create so here i'm using my scissors and i'm going to separate those boots and i'm going for just one boot and a flower composition on top of it for this card now you can definitely go clean and simple like i did with the balloon the hotter balloon in the previous card like add a little bit of an ombre effect on your background and then stick the boot on top and that's what I'm showing you here. However, I'm going to show you how easy it is to blend this cerulean blue with coffee ink and end up with a vintage look and feel. It's super easy to transform one look into another. So all I'm doing here is just blending in a little bit of coffee ink all over the place. And you can see how this is going to give a completely different look and feel. Notice that I always keep close to me a blending brush and a blending tool. This way I can control how much ink I transfer into my project. And again, just like we do it with the first card, I'm going to add some coffee brown splatters. You can go and add some water splatters as well. You can do some stamping if you like with text stamp at the background. I'm going to stop here and it's time to put together the card. Before I stick my elements, I usually go all around them with a brown ink just to make sure that I have a coherent look on both the background and the elements. And then for the boot, I went with foam tape at the back to get some dimension. And then at the top, I'm going to tuck inside the leaves and the flowers. And I usually play around at this stage on how my flower composition is going to be. And then I commit and stick down everything. You can either peel off the backing and use them as stickers or use foam tape or even glue if you don't want to bother peeling off every little element. I'm stamping my element with shadow black ink, really vibrant and crisp stamping for sentiments. Let's add some white splatters, for that I'm using calligraphy white ink. All I did was to stick this panel on top of a black card base, as you can see here, and I did rearrange the flower composition a little bit more to add extra flowers and leaves as well. And let's create a bright and colorful card now. Super simple to do. I'm just inking up the base of a panel here with my Nature Dye Ink. This is the green color that I have in my collection. I'm oversaturating at the bottom and as I go towards the top, I'm going to add lighter color. That's why I switched into this brush. Then I'm going to add some splatters. Again, using the same nature color, and I will make sure that the splatters fall only at the base of my panel, where that green inking is. Then I picked three flowers from my ephemera pack, and I also made sure that they are not the same size, just for some interest. Then I'm going to give them stems. For that, I'm using my rabbons. 
and I will be playing with these border ones, but you can definitely draw the stems or cut out very thin strips of cardstock and use them as a stem. I think these border ribbons work great as stems as well and they give kind of a whimsical look and feel on the card. So I created three of those so that I can stick on top the flowers. You can uh, stick the flowers directly with a adhesive or you can use foam tape like I did to add dimension. I'm going to finish off my little scene by adding a butterfly again from the same pack. Add any sentiment on this panel and stick it on top of a card base and here are some close-up photos of the finished card. Keep in mind all these cards could easily be an art journal page or the start of it, so really card making and art journaling are not as far apart as you think. So here is one of my favorite techniques, I'm just using uh, the acetate from packaging. I applied a little bit of my cerulean blue on top, I'm going to spray water and then I will transfer this on top of a panel. By the way, this panel is watercolor paper, so it takes water nicely. I'm going for a very soft look. Just add some color into your panel, it is going to create this lovely watercolor look. I used the same ink color and added some blue splatters all over the place. And just to add some visual texture and make the background look more interesting, I'm going to stamp some text. Notice that I inked up only the center of this text stamp. I didn't go all over the place. I don't want to have the perfect impression here. I just want to have something more interesting looking at my background without overwhelming the background. So everything stays nice and subtle. That's why I use the same in color. Now all I did was to pick three butterflies from the ephemera pack. I did use foam tape at the back and I'm just going to stick them, all three of them, on this panel. And then to finish it off I'm just going to add the sentiment. Anything goes on this card, this can easily be a friendship card, a birthday card, a hello card, a thank you card. For my card base I'm going to do some stamping again all around the border using the same stamp that I used for the panel just to bring all the elements together. I did finish it off by adding some white splatters and then stick the panel on top of the card base. And here are some close-up photos. For the next card I'm going to play with the open book, you can definitely use it on a portrait uh, orientation if you cut off a part of the book or you can turn around and use it on a landscape orientation and it fits perfectly inside. So I'm going to play with uh, navy blue ink here and I'm going to ink up the bottom. I'm oversaturating the bottom with ink and as I go towards the top I will switch to the other blue of my collection which is cerulean blue and you see how beautiful they both blend, absolutely love this color combination. Again I'm going for an ombre look starting from darker blue to lighter blue to white so I will make sure that I don't move that blue all the way to the top. And you know I love splatters, that's why I'm going to use the navy blue one and add some splatters on the project. These always add a more whimsical look and feel on any background. And then all you need to do is to create the composition for the top of the card. For the focal point I'm going with the open book and then I'm going to decorate it by using flowers and leaves as well as a butterfly. For the book I did use foam tape at the back to get dimension and at the same time it allows me to tuck behind other elements as you can see here. With a thin black marker I am creating the trail of the butterfly and I like to make it look as if she came out of the open pages of the book. Again, this card can be a thank you card, a hello card, whatever you like. I'm just sticking down a little quote here. And all I did was to stick this panel on top of a standard card base that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Now in my dye ink collection I do have six colors. This is the only one that I didn't play in this video. So here comes the burgundy one, absolutely gorgeous and also perfect if you are going for a vintage look and feel. I will show you the perfect vintage color combination for your projects if you combine the burgundy ink and the coffee ink. 
And again here, if you notice, I did apply the first layer of ink with brush just to make sure that I don't oversaturate anything. And then I went with a blending tool and oversaturate a few areas. I'm doing the same thing with my coffee ink on top. And I have the perfect background. You can add splatters to make it look more interesting if you like. As they dry, they will appear even more. And then you can even do some uh, stamping at the background if you want. I decided to leave it as is. And let's add the focal points. Again, for my camera, I'm going with foam tape at the back. I make sure that the foam tape is not all the way to the edges so that I can tuck behind flowers and leaves. And you can add as many flowers and leaves as you like to embellish your camera. Always remember a little touch of inking up the edges of all the elements with a little bit of brown, especially for a vintage project, really makes a difference. It kind of brings all the elements together. Add a little quote or a sentiment. This would make a great miss you card as well. And again, here are some close-up photos on this card. Now, things are getting really difficult for me since I only have all these leftovers from the pack. Three butterflies, a bunch of leaves and a bunch of flowers. So I need to be really creative for the next three cards to complete my 10 cards challenge. However, butterflies are super easy to use. One way to go is to cut out a rectangle. You can either use your paper trimmer and cut out a simple rectangle. If you do have any fancy dies like I have here, one with a lace design, use one of them. It doesn't have to be a rectangle, it can be any shape really. Stamp a big sentiment that you have in your stars that really makes a statement. And on top, stick a butterfly. It can be this butterfly and create a trail as if it is coming from the letters or use one of the other butterflies like so. You definitely create a flower composition with the leaves and the flowers. So I'm just trying to be creative here and use only what I have. Now you can stick this panel on top of a cardstock, pink or uh, brown would be great, or you can just browse through any of your pattern papers and see if it matches with anything. Now this butterfly is really easy to match since it has only pink and brown colors. I decided to go with this pattern paper and I think that it matches perfectly this design. So just look into your stars and see how you can incorporate what you have with the designs and the colors of what is left from the pack. So here is a close-up look on this card that I put together in no time. And let's move on to another really creative card. Here again I'm using a rectangle panel. I stamped the sentiment, nice and big focal point. And since I only have leaves and flowers, let's create a composition. I'm just going to stick everything around the sentiment. For the flower I went dimensional with a foam square at the back. For the leaves I will alternate. Some of them are completely flat, others do have foam tape at the back. I placed this panel on top of a dark green card base and here is a close-up photo. You can see it looks stunning and I did embellish it with a few gems. And on to the last card for today. Here I stamped my sentiment on top of a little fancy label. I am going to embellish it with a butterfly, but I want to create something more interesting for the background. This is your chance to use any background stamp or any embossing folder that you may have in your stash. So here I'm just inking up the edges. I want to bring the eye more to the center of the panel. And uh, this is where I thought it would, would be fun to play with a new product that I have in my stash that I haven't used before. So I'm bringing in the Stardust uh, powders. These are by Stamperia and you're supposed to apply them with uh, wax. These are actually shiny pigments and you can definitely mix them with other mediums. And I am planning to make a video only with those so you can see how they work. But look how shiny it looks. I'm using the green one here and it really brings all the texture of the embossing folder. So the whole idea here is that if you have a very tiny element to use as your focal point, just make sure that the background is quite interesting so your card design doesn't look so plain. And this is a smaller panel than the standard card. I'm going to stick that with foam tape on top of an A2 card base, stick the panel with the sentiment on top and embellish it with the butterflies. 
And that was the 10th and last card for today. I hope I gave you some ideas on how you can use the Ephemera pack to create cards. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. Links to everything I used can be found down below, just like always. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.